So this is my clock. Um, in this video, I'm going to kind of describe what it is, what I did to it, and also give kind of a description of how it works. I'll start with kind of a high-level description and then get into a little bit more detail. So um, to start out, uh, this started out as a clock that I bought off of eBay. I mean, it was just a traditional style mechanical clock. Um, and I modified it to be kind of a hybrid clock. It's like now kind of a cross between a mechanical clock and a digital clock. And the way I did that was um, I kept it timed off of a pendulum. You can see actually, um, there's a little window in the clock. You can see that pendulum swinging back and forth. So it still has a pendulum like an old style clock, but it counts how many times it swings back and forth electronically and it converts that count into that LED display to show the time. And <clears throat> so the way it does that, um, to power the pendulum, to actually give it the energy to keep swinging back and forth, it has some magnets on the pendulum and some coils that basically give it a little push every time it swings back and forth. Um, and to count how many times it swings back and forth to track the time, it actually has a, a, uh, a light sensor that kind of detects when the pendulum swings by and then it kind of increments that. And electronically, um, it does that using just discrete integrated circuits, uh, transistors, and basic parts. Um, there's no software controlling this thing, uh, no microcontroller. So, I mean, it really, it just has a bunch of parts that you know, activate each other in a sequence of events to make this thing work, and it's all hardwired. So I can't, you know, there's no software, I can't reprogram it. If I want to change something about how it works, I need to physically rewire things. So I think what I'll do now is open the door and kind of let you look under, well, see on the inside a little bit. So there, try to get the light in here just right. You can see the pendulum up here. Just try to get you a better shot of the pendulum and you can see all the electronics. So maybe I'll talk about the pendulum first. You know, I need to get some more light in here because you can barely see this stuff. Hold on just a second. Okay, that's better. Okay. So right here, you can see these are the coils right here and right here that power the pendulum. And you can see in the pendulum there's these permanent magnets in there, right? So obviously the coils, I'm just running current through the coils in timed pulses to give the pendulum a little push with those magnets. Um, and you can see up here, I've got this thing right here and this right here, these are um, photo transistors. What I have is, if you look at the pendulum, you can see that little uh, piece of cardstock on there. That cardstock, it moves in, but it's a, basically a photo breaker plate, a photo interrupter. So what it does is, um, there's a little LED that shines on those photo transistors, like a, you know, a source and a receiver, and that photo interrupter moves in between to block the light. So what happens is, um, that's how it detects the motion of the pendulum. So this one, the, this is the sensor that actually counts how many times the pendulum swings back and forth. So half of the cycle, that sensor gets covered up by the pendulum. And so it basically detects, you know, every swing. And this one over here, sorry, I blocked the light there. The sensor on the left, there's a little slit that lines up when the pendulum gets to the very bottom of the swing. So what that does is, is it detects when the pendulum is the lowest position. Sorry, the light keeps fluctuating on this thing. It's, that's just how smartphone cameras work. Um, <clears throat> anyways, so there's two, uh, two main systems in here. I'm getting a little more detail now. Um, there's the system that controls uh, the pendulum that basically keeps its energy going, the system that gives it power and controls the pulsing through those coils. 
And then there's also the system that counts how many times it swings back and forth and converts that into the display to show the time. And those two parts are completely separate and we're completely independent of each other. Um, so I think first what I'll do is describe how the coils are powered. So I just described this sensor on the left that detects when the pendulum gets to the bottom of the swing. So that's responsible for timing the coils, to keep the coils in sync with the pendulum. So what that does is the, um, the circuit detects, I'm sure I should show you this circuit really quick. Um, there's this little board on the side here. You see these, this sequence of flashing lights. And then there's also this other board on the side here. These are the two circuit boards responsible for powering the coils. So what happens is, when that slit lines up with, sorry, the light keeps changing on this thing. There we go, that's better. When the slit lines up with this sensor right here, this LED flashes. So that LED flashes when that slit lines up when the pendulum's at the bottom position. And when that does, is it turns on these two pulsers. You can see those two LEDs that turn on at the same time, but turn off at different times. See, this one turns on, actually they both turn on at the same time, but they turn off in sequence. So what, what's really going on here is, after it detects the pendulum is at the bottom, it waits for a second for it to swing to the other side, and then it gives it a push. And so, between the time that this LED turns off and this one turns off, the coils turn on. So you can see it goes, they turn off, it's like one, two, one, two. You can see that one turns off and the other one turns off. So between the times those turn on and off, it gives a pulse to the pendulum. And that basically provides the timing to keep it going, right? Because you want to, you need to give it the push at the right time to get, to keep it swinging. Just like, you know, pushing a little kid on a swing, you know, you, you have, timing is everything to keep them going. Okay, so that's, and basically what happens here is, this, these two big resistors and this transistor here are actually what push the current through the coils. So this is really the power section here. Okay, so now, that, that's kind of a basic um, overview of how the uh, pendulum is powered and how it keeps going like this. So now let's talk about the part that actually counts how many times it swings back and forth. So, you know, I described this sensor up here that um, basically gets blocked, but the light gets blocked half the time on every swing. So this little LED right here, you can see it flashes in sync with the pendulum. That is the swing count. And so you'll notice that every time this one flashes, these LEDs update. So what this is doing here is it's counting the swings um, in a binary pattern. So this is the output of a binary counter. So this LED lighting sequence is a count in binary. So these LEDs represent, you know, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so forth, all the way up to 256. So it's, you know, 2 to the n power. And so basically, I'll just, I'll stop this really quick. I'm going to stop the count. I'll keep the pendulum going. So you can see, if you wanted to figure out what's this number here, that would be, see, we have these four LEDs lit up here. These two are off and these two are on. So that is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. 16 32 are off. So plus 64 plus 128. So 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 64 plus 128. That's how many pendulum swings it has counted since it last incremented the display. So I'm going to turn that count back on again. So basically what this board does is it counts a five minute interval. So after this binary count gets to 300, it resets the count and updates the display. So you can see the display, it works in five minute increments, right? So. That's why it counts to 300, because 300 seconds is five minutes. And so basically what that does is at, this creates a five minute time signal that goes to this circuit up here. 
and this is the uh, minutes and the hours counter. So this is the seconds counter, this is the minutes and the hours counter. So you can see I've got these this, these two lines of 12 LEDs, um, one on the bottom, one on the top. The row of LEDs on the bottom is the minutes counter, so that's uh, 12 five minute intervals for one hour. And the one up top is um, uh, 12 LEDs corresponding to each hour. So basically, um, every time this uh, counts 300 swings, five minutes, the minutes counter up updates by one increment. And then when the minutes counter updates through 12 increments, the hours counter increments one. And basically, I have this board up here, which kind of decodes all of that to convert it to the LED display. And the whole reason I need um, this decoder board is because, you know, the hours hand, these lights turn on either at any time when either um, the hours hand or the minutes hand lines lines up. But these outer LEDs only turn on when the minutes hand, uh, when the minutes line up, right? So I have the hours and the minutes timed separately. But it's just kind of a logical case because the, um, you know, if I, if I didn't have, if I didn't have any way to control that, then only the hours, only the outer LEDs would turn on when the minutes hand incremented. So it's just kind of a, a logical control to make the display look how I want it to look. Okay, and so also, I have these buttons up here. Um, let's talk about the switch at the top first. So that switch controls um, what is the source signal for the counting circuit. So right now you can see the LEDs are updating, right? It's counting the pendulum swings. But if I hit this switch, you'll notice that binary count isn't updating anymore. That's because I disconnected the pendulum from the binary counter. So um, that allows me to keep the pendulum going but stop the count. Okay, and so now um, that's actually a really useful function because it lets me set the time on the clock. So what this button does here, it lets me fast forward the display. So and it only works when I activate, when I have this switch pulled forward like this. So watch what happens when I push this button. So you'll see everything move a lot faster. So you can see everything incrementing really fast. That's because I'm putting a really fast signal into the circuit. So watch what happens to the front display when I do that. And push that button again. See, it kind of puts the clock in fast forward, which is really useful for when I want to set the time. And so there's this button here. What that does is it resets all the counters and takes the clock back to 12 o'clock. So I'm gonna push that button really quick and the clock will go back to 12. So both of those functions are really useful. Like the 12 o'clock uh, reset, like if I wanted to synchronize this clock at midnight or at noon, I could just look at another clock and then when it's noon, I push that button and, and it synchronizes the clock. Okay, so that's kind of a, um, getting to be kind of a detailed description of how this thing works. Um, anyways, I think I'm gonna cut it off here. It's getting kind of lengthy, uh, getting kind of long-winded, but I mean, I kind of want to give an explanation of how this thing works because, I mean, it's kind of convoluted and not necessarily intuitive. All right, thanks a lot.